Elon Musk once said that you can't study the leaves on a tree until you understand the trunk, the limbs, and the branches. So this is the same thing here with this router. You can't understand the firewall rules, which are the tree leaves, until you understand the other aspects of the security of this router. So let's look at some other tree trunk type aspects first. We go to system, go down to users, then it's important that you don't use the word admin for your login name because everybody knows that's the default. Change your login to something else. As far as passwords go, you don't want to use a password that has words in it because they use dictionaries to try to find those passwords. The thing I do is I take something like, now I lay me down to sleep, I take the first letter of each one of those words in that phrase that I'll never forget. I use that as the first part of my password. Then I append it with something like a star 23 or pound 51, something like that. And that makes it easy to remember the entire password. So make sure your password is difficult, not easy. The next thing we can look at here is under HAP AP, you want to reduce the footprint that the hackers have to get into your router. So you notice my DHCP server range is from 101 to 123. That's only 22 addresses they have to work with. By making this small, I can pick a login address, which only a person with that address can log into the router. I can pick that number and it's harder for them to guess what it is because there's a lot more guesses out of the 254 when you only have 22. So 254 minus 22 is some number 230, something like that. Anyway, it really increases the amount of work they have to do to figure out what address they need to access the router. Another thing to look at has to do with your services. Once again, we're reducing the footprint for the attackers. Turn off all the service ports you don't need. Just keep these two. And then when you get once you've rebooted your router and everything's working and you can log in using the IP address, then you go ahead and disable the Winbox service also. So it cannot be, so your router cannot be accessed through a remote Winbox. Files is a very important thing to consider because the script right here, if someone else put that script on my router, it could have any contents, I don't know what's in it. So they could actually execute functions on my router without my knowledge. So the way around this is to delete any scripts you didn't put in here and delete any other files that don't belong in here so they can't be used as Trojan files. Along with the same concept of things executing without your knowledge, you always look at your scheduler window. Make sure that the only things scheduled are the things that you placed there. If there's something else, delete it because you don't want a Trojan hiding inside. And last but not least, you want to go to Tools, make sure your Mac servers are turned off. This one should always be off. This one should be on when you're actually making changes to the router. And this one should always be off. So as we said before, once you're finished making your changes, you've rebooted the router, you've logged in using your IP address, then you can also turn off this Winbox server, Mac server, for better security. And now we're back to the actual firewall itself. The actual firewall rules themselves, they're very important, but so is the address list, which we show right here. This address list gives a name to an address. You can also have a a range of addresses with a dash and the upper limit of the range. So this identifies that address or that group of addresses with the name router. Same with support. Support is for people who want to access the router. You can use any name I use support. And that's a specific address in order to log into the router, which we've talked about before under the user configuration. This is a firewall rule application of the same concept. So if we go back and look at the firewall rules, let's look at that one for a moment. Down here we have 
a firewall rule which will limit who can access the router. You notice it's an input chain. Input has to do with reference to the router. Things coming into the router, it looks at each one of those packets. And there's advanced options here. If the source address list is not support, in other words, just not a person you want to access your router, and the destination is router, then the action is to drop that packet. So those packets never get to the router, therefore they can never access the router. Another example of a firewall is item five here. If I double click that, you see that the general rule is we're talking about inputs to the router once again, but we got an interface list, not the LAN. So you notice there's several choices here from the router itself. So if it's not the LAN and it's an input, then the action, there is no other advanced features. The action is to drop that packet. So once again, if they're not authorized, because they're outside of the LAN, they're either on the Wi-Fi or they're on the internet trying to access your router, they can't do it because this drops those packets. So there's a little bit of exposure to how this thing works. The last thing you always want is a catch-all which says, Inputs from any place, no options, drop. So what that does, anything that got through all these rules and is still alive, we're going to drop it because we didn't consider that and we don't want them coming in because we didn't consider that possibility. So this gives you a quick overview of the firewall. There will be many more discussions of these firewall rules. But now you get an idea how to look at it and how to read it. One important thing, if you decide to add a firewall rule, always make sure that you provide comments because you'll forget 30 days from now why you did that. So the comment helps you to understand these firewall rules later on. And this concludes the first intro to security and the firewall rules.